Filipinos are the largest ethnic minority in Hong Kong, where they send nearly a tenth of overseas Filipino workers in the city. Many Filipinos come to work as foreign domestic helpers, or FDHs, and thus could only reside by the home of their employers, and could only practice their leisure time outside of their homes every Sunday. These settings where Filipinos live and where Filipinos spend their time together are the topics of these maps, and anyone interested in exploring the habits of Filipino Hong Kongers are its target audience. When I had started the map project, the 2016 population by census and the 2019 district council ordinary electoral constituency boundaries were available. These included very detailed information on the geographic distribution of not only Hong Kongers, but of Filipino Hong Kongers. It is noted that some data on the census disregard FDHs, but I have carefully picked data that includes them since this forms a significant portion of Filipinos in the city. Hong Kong is split into three main regions. Under each region are several administrative districts, and under each administrative district are District Co Constituency Council Areas, or DCCAs. More recent data published by the Hong Kong Census and Statistics Department from the 2021 Census displayed more up-to-date data on the city's demography. But instead of District Council constituencies, the data was only categorized by administrative district. To illustrate the relationship more precisely between the Filipino population and their shared spaces, I opted to use the more precise data from 2016 for the first part of the map project. Luckily, the DCCA boundaries have not changed from 2016 to 2019, so the information on the map is valid. However, the gap in information led me to create the second part of the map project, highlighting the population growth across areas by administrative district. To determine the landmarks, I interviewed Ma'am Sheila Tebia Bonifacio, Gabriela Hong Kong, and Unifil Migrante Hong Kong and conducted an informal survey of the sites she mentioned to gauge how to make sense of the Filipino population. Furthermore, I searched for any available public data for services targeted towards Filipinos and visited these sites to independently confirm their locations. You could see that the final map project that I've submitted is different from the role being played. This is because while the information of the landmarks and the locations remain the same, I've shifted from using OpenStreetMap data directly to using its coordinates as a guide instead in the first map. The map, where are the Filipinos going, contains points without any regard for the actual size or shapes of the landmarks, since, as I'll discuss later, many of these landmarks do change location quite regularly. The first portion of the map, entitled Where are the Filipino Hong Kongers, showcases the relationship between Filipino population density and places they frequented as a group. From my independent study, these could be classified into the following five major categories. Government Institutions These comprise of the offices of the Philippine Consulate General in Hong Kong, the Philippine Overseas Labor Office, Overseas Workers Welfare Administration in Hong Kong. Yeah. Dito sa Hong Kong, may ano yan eh, parang may distinct places para dun sa mga migrant domestic workers. Siguro hindi dahil inihihiwalay talaga yung mga ibang lahi. Eh, for example, inihihiwalay ang Indonesian sa Pilipino or ang Thai sa Nepal. Um, it's a natural uh, place na yung mga Pilipino ay mostly naggagathered sila along Central and Admiralty. Why? Kasi nandoon yung building ng Philippine Consulate at Polo. Ethnic Minority Services These include NGO offices and recreation zones targeted more broadly at ethnic minorities. Religious Institutions Several places of worship regularly cater to Filipinos, going so far as to have services in Filipino. Sectoral Organizations and hotspots. Institutions that serve specific sectors, other than the religious, vary on a weekly basis in geographic location. These serve specific sectors of the Filipino community, migrant workers, LGBTQ plus community members, groups from specific regions or provinces, and women are a few examples. Many organizations such as Gabriela Hong Kong and Likham Filipino Migrants Cultural Organization prop up booths at Chater Road and Icehouse Street in Central every Sunday. 
So, yung yung kahabaan na yon ay ano, tawag dito, diyan mo makikita mainly yung mga program. Tapos yung kahabaan kasi ng Chater Road, may nag-cross pa na isang street din na sarado din, both. So parang pa-cross 'yan. Yun naman yung area na yon, ang tawag doon ay Ice House. Uh-huh. So parang Chater Road, Ice House. Diyan sa Ice House Diyan naman yung tambayan mainly ng mga taga Cordillera. Here you can see a booth from migranteng artista ng bayan, Chita Road. Several sectoral organizations such as Mission for Migrant Workers at the back of the postal office. These booths aren't permanent but are regularly set up at the same area. Tambayan Locations Leisure also plays a large part in the Filipino-Hong Kongers' relationship with their space. Large public parks, beaches, and streets serve as hotspots for Filipino activity, especially on Sunday when foreign domestic workers are given their only weekly vacation, since these public spaces allow them to hold recreational activities such as dancing, unlike in malls. Through the map, we see that Filipinos are mostly situated at the region of Hong Kong Island, And thus, most places they frequent together and services targeted towards them, especially that of the Filipino government, such as the Consulate General, are also in this region. Many of these landmarks could be shown to be densely packed at the District Council Constituency Area, or DCCA, of Chung Wan. There are few Filipinos who live in that area, as opposed to neighboring DCCAs, such as Peak that most Filipino landmarks are in a DCCA that is largely white or barren of Filipinos living there, indicate that while many Filipinos go here to be with other Filipinos, rarely do they live here. They live around this area in neighboring administrative regions. Filipinos are willing to leave their homes to be with other Filipinos in these Filipinos' establishments, especially tambayan spots and sectoral organizations that usually only exist for one day at a week. They set up every Sunday morning, congregate for the day, and leave. Filipinos go where there are other Filipinos. Um, yung mga malalapit na dyan, hindi na lumalayo. Mm. So, dyan na sila tumatambay, nagpapalipas ng oras, ganyan. Sa paligid din naman kasi yan, meron ng remittance center, may mga kainan, ba? Diba? Eh, kaysa mamasahe pa sila at magastusan. So, dyan na lang sila. The second story in our map project, and where they are going, aims to make sense of Filipino population growth in Hong Kong. As shown in the map, all but three administrative districts have had their Filipino population grow between the 2016 and 2021 censuses. And the three that had their shrunk, only shrunk marginally, to confirm the significance of this growth, I performed a Wilcoxon signed rank test between the Filipino populations of each administrative region, and it had shown that there is a significant difference. Now that I've determined the significance of this growth, the next question is to ask, where is this growth? This map shows that where the Filipino population is growing is largely independent of the number of Filipinos in that area. The yellow bar graphs where the Filipino populations grow did not correspond to the most Filipino rich, yellow, or Filipino deficient, red, areas. Conversely, the places where the Filipino population has shrunk aren't necessarily the most Filipino rich or the most Filipino deficient. The Filipino population is more likely than not to be growing without any regard for any Filipino presence in the area. The process of making this map taught me a few lessons about map making. A few technical feats were coding in QGIS to include all the parameters I needed by DCCA setting the correct cartographic projection to input landmarks with coordinates from OpenStreetMap, or manipulating the symbology and diagrams of features. However, I believe the biggest takeaway from this project was that the spaces we inhabit are often determined by our social situations. Filipino domestic helpers have been congregating in the same areas that they have been for 20 years because of the state of their labor. More Filipinos are starting to stay in Hong Kong across all administrative regions regardless of the Filipino population. And it is interesting to see now 
that considering recent developments of political and social situations of both the Philippines and Hong Kong, where these trends of the geographic distribution of Filipinos is heading. I'd like to thank Ma'am Sheila for assisting me in the research and of course Ma'am Oni for guiding the map creation process. Thank you! One, two, three.